Today's shiur begins at the Mishnah that you'll find out on the first wide line of Daf Tzadi Aleph, the lower part of the Daf. Before we begin the Mishnah, we have a topic heading. This, for those of you who have been uh, participating in our last shiurim, this might uh, appear as a Mishnah that I would call anticlimactic. Because this Mishnah, as our title indicates, Ksubas Bonin Tolui Al Q Moiser Dinner. The ability to execute a Ksubas Bonin which is uh, that which we've been discussing extensively in our last shiurim, that is dependent on the presence of a Moiser Diner. Also, something that we've expressed, uh, or we've explained extensively in our recent shiurim. So, this Mishnah is essentially the basis of of um, all that we've been saying till now, uh, we draw your attention to the uh, special daf that we added into the uh, Gemara Markings Masechta, which uh, described the traditional uh, Subas Bon and Dikran, and that's what the Mishnah describes now. So let's read the Mishnah. Mishoya Nosi Noshim Umesu. A man had been married to two wives, and uh, from the two wives there were uh, sets of, two sets of uh, sons. And uh, the wives died, leaving uh, the husband and uh, the orphans. The acharkach meisu, and then the husband died. So, on a Torah level, the husband inherits his wife. And now, with the death of the husband, the yisaymim mevakshim ksubas imon. The uh, orphans, uh, particularly the children of one of the two wives, are seeking their mother's ksuba. Uh, the the reason for one set in particular to seek it out is because their mother came into the marriage bringing a lot of property from her father's house and, uh, and it's, it's in their interest for them to be the sole heirs of her, the sole receivers I don't want to use the word heirs because technically speaking the father inherited uh, the both mothers and uh, whatever properties they brought into the marriage, and on a total level, it should all be distributed equally amongst all the sons. Nevertheless, we know of a rabbinic provision that we've discussed already a lot, called Ksubas Bonindikrin, that entitles the sons of each woman, respectively, to inherit their own mother's Ksuba. So if you have one uh, woman that came into the marriage with a lot of money, and especially if she had only, let's say, one son, that that child would be interested in being the exclusive receiver of whatever her mother brought into the marriage, her mother's ksuba, including whatever the father had dedicated toward her ksuba. So that's the case of the yisaymim mevakshin ksuba zimon. The heirs of one of the women, in particular, would be if if everything is not equal. So then one side would re- have an interest in getting their mother's ksuba because it represents a lot of money for them. So. What now? What? How does the Mishnah continue? The Ein Shom El Subas. If the father's estate amounted to the value of those two Subas only, he had no property of his own, nothing extra beyond the value of those two Subas. Chelkin Bishove. Then one set of sons cannot demand their mother's Suba. Because otherwise, that would be a a, um, a preempting of the laws of Yerusha, that the laws of inheritance that the Torah envisions. However, if in addition to the two ksubos, there was an adi- there was a, a dinar. Moser means in addition to. In addition to the ksubos, there was a dinar. A dinar is a literally is a, a type of coin. It's a denomination of currency. Uh, Whatever it is, it's a, it's a specific amount. If there is that amount of property held by the father, besides the value of the two ksubas, then elu not link subas iman vi elu not link subas iman. Each set of children would get their own mother's ksuba. And as far as our concern about the laws of inheritance from the Torah standpoint being manifest, it would be the laws would be manifest with the equal distribution of that dinor's worth of property amongst all of the sons equally. Im Omru Yesoimim Let us say there's a case that there was no uh, Moser Dinar. However, the Yesoimim said as follows, 
אם אמרו הישראלים, אנחנו מעלים על נכסי אבינו יופי דינור, כדי שיתלו כסובה סימון. They say that we will accept uh, as, we'll say, overvalued uh, the properties of father by one dinar. So that by overvaluing the properties by a dinar, when the properties would be divided uh, uh, according to the ksubos, So there will be an extra dinar left, and then we would view that as the Mosar dinar. In other words, the, uh, the assignment would be willing to accept a little bit less than, than the actual value of their mother's ksuba. The, the Mishnah says regarding that suggestion, Ein Shomen Lohem. We don't listen to that. We don't accept that. Rather, the properties are evaluated in the court. Whatever the court says, that's the value. The father, when he died, he left a property that equaled the value of the two ksubas, and that's it. However, there was a grandfather that had been alive So that the father didn't actually inherit his father's property. But it was anticipated property that uh, if the grandfather had died before the father, so the father would have inherited it. In the meantime, he didn't die. However, it's, it's property that the, the grandchildren would inherit from the grandfather. The question that the commission is dealing with Can we view that those these out those out, out that outstanding property as if it were it part of their father's estate and that would put the father's estate over the the minimum amount namely over the value of the two ksubas alone because he would also have this inheritance from the grandfather and that would represent the moiser dinner so the Mishnah says Anon kebemusak it doesn't work that outstanding or anticipated collections are not considered like properties that he is in possession of. Muxuk means that he's in possession of. Rabbi Shimon Oimer, Afilu yesh shom, nechosim shein lehem achrayis, einon klum. Even if the father has, in addition to the two ksubos of value, he has other portables that are not that are his own his own portables that he now uh, bequeaths uh, uh, unto the heirs upon his death that does not count however as the Moser dinar that we need for Ksubas Bon and Dikrin Ad Shisham Nechosim Sheshlam Achrayis until you have land real estate Yoyser Al Shteya Ksubas Dinar that uh, real estate whose value is more than the Uh, value of the two ksubas by a dinar. There is a, a, a fundamental point to uh, understand that according to Rabbi Shimon, the uh, the laws of of um, ksubas bon and dikrin uh, uh, are are dependent on we'll say karka on land, so that only if there is a, a, an additional dinar's worth of land. Uh, only until then uh, could we say that there would be Ksubas Bon and Dikrin. The Gemara. Tonu Rabbonon. The Brisa opens up describing a man that had two wives and the Ksubas of each one was a different value. Lezu Elef v'lezu Chamesh Meos. One wife had a Ksuba worth a thousand and the other wife's Ksuba was worth five hundred. And let us just say for the sake of simplicity that each wife had one son with the father, with the man, with their uh, husbands. With their husband, that is. Im ye shom dinar, if besides the, we'll say the thousand and the five hundred, besides the fifteen hundred uh, in the uh, husband's possession at the time of his death, there was an additional dinar, 
then Elu Notlin Ksuba Simon, Elu Notlin Ksuba Simon, the heirs of the woman of a thousand will get the thousand, and the wo- the heirs of the woman of the five hundred will get only five hundred. The Imlav, if there is no Moser dinner, then Yechalku Bishava, then the fifteen hundred um, a, a worth of property that the father left will be divided equally amongst the all of his sons. Before we continue in the Gemara, we have a topic heading, the Inyan HaMoyser Dinar. With regard to the issue of that extra dinar, Ma Dinam Shel Nechosim, what will the law be regarding, and we're going to feature two situations of property, Shebeshas Misa, when the father died, Hoyu Merubin, they were um, a lot. Merubin means a lot. Dahainu Shoya Moyser Dinar. It means, for, for our purposes, it means that the value of the property that the father left was a dinor more than the combined value of the ksubos. Avolad shas hashuma, but by the time it came to the court evaluation, there was a drop in market value and nismatu. The property value was now less and you didn't have a Moser dinar. You had at, at most the value of the two ksubas combined and that's it. So we want to we want to know what to emphasize. Do we emphasize the value at the time of death that would and, and in this case that would enable the ksubas bonedikrin to be activated and that one set of sons would end up getting uh, the, the the, their mother's ksuba, which might, which would be larger than the other set of sons, would get their mother's ksuba, which is less. Or maybe we, if we focus on the, on the uh, evaluation of the property at the time of the formal evaluation, and not the time of the father's death. There's another case, the opposite, me'atim v'nisrabu. That means at the time of death, the value of the property was less and that you didn't have a Moser dinar but at, by the, but at the time of the court evaluation of the properties left by the father there was an increase in property value making it such that there was more than a Moser dinar there was, a, there was more than the value of the two ksubas alone there was at least a dinar more now uh, uh, there in the property the Gemara Pshita Meruba Venismatu it's clear, it's posh, it's simple that if at the time of death the property was a lot in value, and there was a Moser dinar at least but at the time of the Shuma the court evaluation, it fell in value Kvar Zohu Bohen Yorshim the Yorshim acquire what they what is their due based on the time of death so that in this case of Meruv and Saf, that there would be Ksubas Bonedikr, because at the time of death, there was a Moser Dinar. Muatem v'nisrabu mai. What about a case where at the time of death there was not a Moser Dinar, but as a result of market value increases, there was at the time of the evaluation, yes, a Moser Dinar. Mai. What is the halacha then? Toshma. Let's try to answer this from an incident. The Nihsi the properties of the uh, of Bar Tzartzur Mu'atem bin Israbu Havu it was a case just like our question that at the time of his death there was not a Moser Dinar but at the time of the court evaluation there was the Osul Kameh Rav Amram and the, the heirs came to Rav Amram Omar Luhu Zilu Paisinhu Rav Amram says to the uh, to the heirs or of the, the the sons of the mother with the lesser ksuba. You know you have to go and appease the your sheikh ksuba gedola. I think that we'll try to understand this. The Rashi uh, doesn't say explain why or what's going on, but when we go on in the Gemara. When, assuming that uh, Rav Nachman, who appears later, 
is a continuation of this train of thought, we'll try to then understand what is happening. All we know is that Rav Amram pleads with the ones that whose mother had the lesser ksuba to go appease the uh, the children of the woman with the larger ksuba. Lo ashkihu. They didn't. They didn't listen. Uh, and uh, we can. We're going to say now that they were anticipating very simply that since at the time of death there wasn't going to be ksubas banindikrin, and for the ch- children of the lesser ksuba the lesser ksuba woman, that is beneficial. By saying no ksubas bon and dikrin, then they will be able to inherit equally with the rest of, with the brothers from the larger woman's ksuba, equally. So, being that the sons of the larger ksuba are going to end up losing, Rav Amram suggested to keep things quiet, to keep things peaceful and harmonious, and brotherly go and appease them. But they didn't listen. They were they said, look, letter of the law is letter of the law. We got this coming to us. Who who cares what they think? Well, Omar Lahu, Rav Amram said, Ilo Mifaisisu Lahu, if you don't appease them, if you don't uh, try to um, get on their good side, make things peaceful, if you don't do that, if you don't appease them, Mochino Lahu Besilva Dolomiva Doma before we translate it, simply say, I'll put you, I'll put you into excommunication. The literal translation, Mochino uh, Lechu, means I'll hit you, Basilva, with a, with a thorn that doesn't, the Lomiva Doma, that doesn't cause any blood loss. So what does it mean to be smitten with a thorn that doesn't cause blood loss? It's a reference to this type of punishment, a punishment of excommunication. Shadrinu Lekamei Rav Nachman. So uh, Rav uh, Amram sent them to Rav Nachman Omar Lahen, and Rav Nachman explained, "Kishem shemerubin v'nismatu zochu bohen yorshim," just like in a case where there was a lot of property, and it became it re- fell in value at the time of the court evaluation. The ruling is based at, on the time of death, and the zochu bohen yorshim means. The, there will be there will be ksubas bon and dikrin because at the time of death the, the circumstances enabling that to take place were there. Well, kach mu'atavinisrabu zochu bohen yorshim. So too, in the case of property at the time of death with with less value and then subsequent increase, everything is determined at the time of death. And at the time of death, there was no ksubas bon and dikrin, and therefore there would be an equal distribution of whatever the father left, because at the time of death there was no ksubas, there was no moser dinner. Since there was no moser dinner, so there couldn't have been the uh, the the carrying out of a ksubas bon and dikrin type inheritance. So that the expression, and this is a little tricky, but on the, at the we're uh, of course at the top of Omid Beis. We didn't mention that, but at the top line of Omid Beis, the Zochu Ben Yorshin in that case meant that the sons of the woman with the larger ksuba acquire, they benefit, the Zochu, they acquire their mother's ksuba in the in the context of ksubas ban and dikrin. The second appearance of that expression, Zochu ben Yorshin, in the case of Mu'otim ben Israbu, there, be careful now, it doesn't mean the uh, the larger ones get their mother ksu, but rather it means the Yorshim are are locked in at, based on the time of death, just like we said before, but in this case, the Yorshim that are that are going like, to win out, so to speak, or, or benefit, by the by, the non ksubas bon and dikrin are the are the sons of the woman with the lesser ksuba, because everything goes according to the shas misa of the father. That, by the way, that uh, added explanation you'll find in the Toysvis read. Before we go further, we have a no se mivne heading, a diamond appears, and. We've written on the side Sidra Shel Mikrim. We now see a series of incidents. Shamushut Lahem 
the common point between them is Tvius Balchoiv, a Tvios Balchov, where a creditor comes to collect. Sheoyla Bohen Shelos Shalachrayas. The questions involving uh, property guarantees will arise. Where a Balchov comes, a creditor comes and takes property away from, let us say, a one who purchased property on the grounds that his debt preceded the, the, the sale of the properties and the, uh, the purchase made in, in the context of that sale. So he has first cracks at it. But now the, the purchaser lost the property. What recourse does he have in terms of turning back to the one who sold him the property? The issue of the guarantee comes up, <coughs> as will become clear in, in, in the Gemara itself. In the first two incidents, this is a, you see with the diamonds, just by scanning the page, you see there's, we have four separate incidents on this Amid. Two, the first two incidents have an additional point in common, and that's what the double underline is used for Havlota. It's a, 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 a highlighting, Lahar Ois Dimyoin Ben Shnei Hamikrim Harishonim, to show the similarity between the two cases. And we're going to see that, halachically speaking, the two cases are exactly the same, from the, at least from the Gemara's uh, standpoint. The only difference between the two cases will be the uh, values that, that the Gemara uses or presents in the cases. However, everything else is the same. So once you master the first case, the second case will be very simple. So now the Gemara. Hahu Gavra, the Havu Maski Bay Alpha Zuzi. There was a man that had a debt of one thousand Zuz. If you if Zuz is confusing, so you say one thousand dollars. Havu Le Tre Apadni. The man that had this debt happened to have two Apadni, two houses. Zavinu. And he sold the two houses. He sold the two houses to a purchaser. Each house he sold to the purchaser for $500. The, there was a creditor who had a bill of collection that predated this purchase. For whatever reason, the, the, the creditor is not going to the original borrower. The borrower basically had received cash, and we'll just say for the sake of simplicity, he spent the cash. So there's nothing left in the, in the possession of the, of the borrower. However, that borrower had sold these houses to the purchaser. And by virtue of the fact that the original uh, uh, debt that we're referring to here was a, a, a star. It was a debt written in a document. So that gives the creditor the right to go in the event that the borrower himself doesn't have the means of paying back the, la- the loan. So he goes to those that purchased from that borrower. And that's what he did. He went to the bar- purchaser and he took one, one of the houses in the meantime. One of those houses, would, you would say, it represents half of the loan that this creditor is trying to collect. Hadar Kotar Flidach. And then he came to collect the second house. Shokal Alpha Zuzi, the purchaser, took out of his pocket $1,000 in cash. The Ka'ozil Legabe. And he went to the creditor. Omarle. And the, so the, and the, pur- the purchaser of the, of the houses now presents an option to the Balchov. Ishav Yoloch Alpha Zuzi, if the house that you already bought, or that you already took, if that one house that you already took from me is worth in your eyes a thousand Zuz, L'chayi, then great. So that the, your taking of that house is the payment of your loan, and there's nothing more for you to do over here. The Elo. If you're going to say, no, what do you mean? Uh, I inspected the, the title and the deeds, and I know that, that that house, that when you bought that house, it was worth $500, it's $500, and that's it, and I want the second house. So the purchase, so, so the locaire says, and if you don't want to accept the one house as covering the full loan, then shkiel alpha zuzi, then take this thousand 
in cash and leave both houses by me. In other words, and return the house that you took from me. Now, in the course of this story, the, uh, the suggestion came, the line just above this, you can see we've uh, dashed, we've uh, dot underlined this line. The Ishavu Lochal Fazuzi. That is an offer that the Lokeach is making to the Baal Chov, that the purchaser of the houses is making to the creditor. If in your eyes you'll inf- you're willing to, we'll say, inflate the value of the house to a thousand zuz or a thousand dollars, then that's great. Can he do that? Is that, a, is that something that is binding? Now you see we have triangles, and on the side they indicate there's a svora and then the chiyosa. And that same situation appears in the next door, as we said, is a carbon copy of this story. So, Sovar Rami Barcham Olamema, Rami Barcham thought to say, well, Hainu Mas Nisan, this idea of inflating the value of something in order to accomplish a particular end is, 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 in, in, is found in our Mishnah. And from our Mishnah, Rami Barcham says, we're going we're gonna to learn that uh, you can't do that. What does it say in our Mishnah? Imam Ru Yasaimim Hare Anu Malim Al Nichsi Avinu Yafa Dinner. Then and the Mishnah went on to say that that is nothing. Uh, the Mishnah said, Ain Shomen Lahem. What happened in the Mishnah? You had one of the uh, two sets of sons, the sons of the woman with the greater Ksuba, said uh, in, a, in a situation where there was no Moser Dinar, you know what? We're going to look at, our, at the property as being a little overvalued. So we'll end up taking less in the context of the Ksubas Bonedikrin with the little extra serving as the Moser Dinar. The Mishnah says, we don't listen to them. So you see that this kind of offer of, of accepting something at a greater than its value is not of any um, it's not something you can you can do. Omale Rava. Rava says, Me dummy, how can you compare these cases? Hasam in the Mishnah case with the Ksubas Ban and Dikrin, is Lahup Seidoliasmi by Creating an, an, an artificial Moser Dinar, you're creating a loss to the second set of sons from the woman with the lesser Ksuba. The, the, the sons of the woman with the lesser Ksuba, if, they, if you envision this artificial Moser Dinar through the inflation of the value of the properties, they're going to lose out. So we say we don't allow that to take place. This, again, this artificial envisioning of in- increased value, if it's going to result in the loss to a party, uh, to someone party to the case, we don't allow that. However, ha-ha, me is seda. In this case, we have a, a creditor who had a claim of a thousand zuz. Is he going to be experiencing a loss? Alpha yoy, the alpha shakil. He gave as a loan a thousand, and the house... And if he is willing to view it as a thousand, he'll be taking, he'll get it, a, that's, the, that's the pain back of his loan. And I would add, it seems to me, and if not that, he has the cash of a thousand that's being offered to him anyway. So there's no issue of loss over here. So the offer that the Lokeach made is a legitimate offer. At this point, we have another question, though. The Lokeach in the event that, let's say, the, the, the Lokech loses the house. He loses one of the houses, because and, and the, the Baal Chov was willing to view that house as a thousand. Now, how much did this Lokech pay for it? He paid 500. Now, when he bought this house, he had a guarantee that if he, that if he should ever lose the house, he can go back to the one that sold it to him and receive compensation. The instrument through which he uh, demands compensation is called a tirpa. It's a, it's a special document that the court issues for someone who lost properties to a creditor when he seeks compensation uh, or restitution 
he goes to the uh, the libel party with a tirpa. The tirpa bekama kasvi. Now, how much should we write into that tirpa? How much does he have a right to expect by way of compensation? On the one hand, he paid for the house that he now lost to the creditor. He paid five hundred. On the other hand, when the house was taken from him, it was viewed as one thousand. Ravina Omar Alpha. Ravina says that the uh, the purchaser of the house will have the right to receive one thousand zuz in compensation. Rav Avira Omar Bechomesh Mea. No, he can receive as compensation only the original amount that he paid for it, the five hundred. Vichasa, the Gemara itself rules Bechomesh Mea that the house purchaser when he goes to the one who sold it to him, he can collect only 500. And now, the same exact Gemara, just with, instead of talking about 1,000 and 500, we're going to talk about 100 and 50, 100 Zuz versus 50 Zuz. And instead of talking about houses, we're going to talk about uh, little pieces of, uh, small parcels of land. But otherwise, everything is the same. There was a man that owed 100 Zuz. And he had two small parcels of land. And he sold the two parcels of land to a man. Each parcel, 50 Zuz. The creditor the, of, of the, the original landowner came to the purchaser and took one of the lands. Hodar also He then came to take the other parcel of land. After all, the the debt that he was able to collect was a debt of of one hundred. The one parcel of land that he took was worth only fifty. So he wants the second parcel to cover the debt. Shokal mea zuzi. The purchaser took uh, a thousand. Took one hundred zuz in cash. and he went to the creditor. If the one parcel of land that you've already taken from me is in your eyes worth a th- worth one hundred zuz, then that's great. Then you've got, then you have received your compensation, your restitution, and 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 that's great. And you're you're out of the picture. Ve'ilo, if you're not willing to accept the one parcel of land as worth the one hundred zuz, then shkol mea zuzi v'stalik. Then take the 100 Zuz in cash that I'm offering you and leave me with both fields. So far, Rav Yosef Lameymar, Hainu Masnisin, Rav Yosef thought that this kind of offer of inflating the value is based, is, is not, uh, it's not tenable, just like we saw in the Mishnah. And here the Gemara is saving ink, it's just giving a, a short quote, uh, and the mission went on to say, Ain Shomen Lahem. Omar Le Abaye, Mi Domi, how can you compare this case with the Balchov collecting from the Lukuchais to the case of the Mishnah? Hosam Isle Eslub Seidali Asmi, in the Mishnah's case, the uh, Yesoimim of the orphans, the heirs or of the of the woman with the lesser Ksuba will end up losing if we accept the inflation evalu- the inflated evaluation. However, Hacha, in the case of the land sales, my Pseido is lay, what Pseido would the creditor be suffering? Mea Yoyev, Mea Shokil. He gave out initially a loan to the original owner of a, thou- of a, of a hundred Zuz, and he's getting back in payment a hundred Zuz, whether it be the way he views the land as a hundred zuz, even though that might be an inflated evaluation, but nevertheless, to him, it's worth a hundred zuz, or based on the cash uh, offering that the uh, lokech is making, so that there's no loss in this case for the Baal and since there's no issue of loss, the halacha acknowledges the inflated evaluation. The tirpa b'kamakas, we know what about the tirpa that enables the land purchaser to seek compensation from the one who sold it to him, how much should be written in vis-a-vis the value of the of the land that he he lost uh, to the creditor. Ravin Omar Bemeya, he can receive 
um, compensation of a hundred zuz from the uh, fellow who sold him the land. And Rabbi Vira Omar B'chamshin. Rabbi Vira says, no, only 50. The purchaser paid 50. He lost the, one of the pieces of, lands that, of land that was worth 50. That's all they write into the Tirpah. And unlike we saw before, the Gemara rules that the lesser amount is written into the Tirpah. Hahu Gavra, the Havumaski Bay Meo Zuzi. There was a man from whom a hundred Zuz was being collected. In other words, this man owed a hundred Zuz. Shochiv, he died. Shovak Ktino the Aro, the Havashavio Hamshin Zuzi. Shavak means he left as his, his, his estate. Uh, Ketina Dara, a small piece of ground that was worth 50 Zuz. Half the debt that he owed. Also, Balchov Vikotorifle. The creditor came and collected it from the uh, orphans, from the heirs. Also, Yasmi, the uh, heirs then went, Yavule Hamshin Zuzi. Uh, paid him for 50, uh, paid him 50 Zuz and got the land back. Hodar Kotorich Law and lo and behold, the creditor came and took the land again from the assignment. Uh, he, uh, he's not uh, a crazed individual. You understand that he had a debt to collect of 100. So he, the first collection of the land was for him 50. True, he gave up the land, but he had got 50 in cash from the assignment. But there's still a debt of 50 that's outstanding, so he took the land again. The case came to Abai, also the Kamei de Abaye, Omar Lehen. The assignment came screaming, uh, what have, look, how can he take this a second time? What's going on over here? So Abaye says to them, Mitzvah al hayasimim lifroa choiv avihen. There is a mitzvah upon the uh, heirs to pay their father's debts. There is a uh, a Rashi uh, that you'll find in the upper part of the page, the upper third or quarter of the page. Mitzvah yisoyim lifroa choiv avihem mishum kavoyd avihem. It's an honor to their father. It's something that the Beisden cannot force them to do. It's not an, uh, an explicit mitzvah like Kesuka of Cholula. It's a rabbinic mitzvah, rabbinic command. So, Abaye tells them that there is such a mitzvah to pay off father's debts. Hani kamoi mitzvah avdisu. The first 50 zuz that you gave was a nice thing to do. You did a mitzvah. That means the first 50 that you gave the creditor and, and, and with which you got back the land. So you did a nice thing. Ashta uh, kitorif. Now when that creditor comes to take the land a second time, but then Kotorif, he is doing so with the backing of the law. The law is that the properties of a borrower are bound. A lien is upon them to pay off his debts. Velo Amoron Elo Delo Omru This case that enables the the Balchoiv to collect the land a second time to come back for it again is true only if the Yisoyimim, when they paid the 50 to get their land back, that they didn't say, Hani Chamshin Zuzi Demei Da Arakatina. That we're paying you these 50 in order to purchase from you that small parcel of land. Avol. So that if they didn't say that, so they were the the Balchov was getting the fifty from them, as, as Rabbi said, as part of the chov, part of the debt that was owed to him by their father. 
Aval Omrule, if the Yisoyimim, when they offered him the 50, in exchange for the land, they said, Hani Cham Shenzuzi, Domei Ara Katina, we're buying this land from you. We're purchasing this land from you for the 50 zoos that we're now offering you. So it's considered like a standard sale that the that, that man, the creditor in this case, would have made with anybody. Sluki Salkua. The Yusoyimim in that case would have been effect, in, in effect removing the creditor from any further claims to that particular land. Hahu gavra dezavno luksubasa diimei betoivasano. There was a man that sold his mother's ksuba for an amount of money that's called toivasano, which is an amount that's significantly less than the face value of the ksuba. When a, if a, when we, we've seen this uh, situation before of the sale of ksubas. We've seen women selling their own ksubas before. The buyer is taking a, an objective risk. Will he be able to collect that ksuba? That, yes, if the husband dies first or the husband divorces the woman, then the purchaser uh, goes in her stead. However, if the woman dies first, then the husband inherits the ksuba, and that purchaser who was purchasing it from the woman, he's out of he's out of luck. So the purchaser is going to on the will take the risk and buy a ksuba, but paying much less than the face value of the ksuba. So, in, but in this case, it's not the woman selling the ksuba; it's the son of the woman selling the ksuba and the mother is still alive so it's a it's a case and there was a, an expression that we've used in our shroom in the past it's a well-known expression called selling the brooklyn bridge it's now in other words selling something that you don't own the son has no he has no current connection to the the mother's ksuba she's alive and well okay but he did the son sold the ksuba to, an, to some purchaser. The purchaser paid what we said, toivas hana. The omar lay and the, and the son, the seller of the ksuba, adds the following. Ias aim If my mother comes and, and protests uh, the, the, this sale, Lo mafzino loch. I am not going to compensate you. Because you're taking a real risk. Not only the risk that she might die before her husband, but the risk that she might even come along and protest the sale and say, I have, uh, I have, it's my ksuba. I have no intentions of someone else coming to collect it in my stead. So, in simple terms, he's buying it without a chrayas. He's buying without a guarantee. Shriva ime velo aro. The uh, the the woman died, and uh, she had not protested the sale. Let us assume, though, uh, that we assume when the, the mother died, uh, she uh, she died after her husband, so that we have a situation that she, the woman was in the position to collect the ksuba. So. Uh, she 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 had died after again we say uh, she died uh, after her husband she could have collected the ksuba but uh, she died before she ever collected the ksuba and she had not protested the sale so you can imagine the uh, the purchaser then is, is, is quite happy then that he has uh, he has the ksuba coming to him it would have it would have been paid to the woman. She never protested the sale. And uh, she, and uh, he had bought the ksuba from her son. Her son, obviously being the one in line of inheritance of the ksuba. And he purchased it. This purchaser bought it from that son. But to his great chagrin, the son himself 
comes to protest the sale. Where, where his mother could have protested the sale. So he, uh, he says, I'm coming here instead of my mother. And I'm protesting the sale. And I'm going to take the ksuba. And you know what? I'm not even going to pay you back for the purchase money that you gave me. Because you bought it without any guarantee. You bought it without a chryas. And you knew that. And you accepted that. Again, you see the, the triangles with Romi bar and Rova objecting. Sova Romi bar Meymar. Rami Bahama thought Ihu Bimokum Ime Koi that the the son is instead of his mother and he can in fact protest it and the, the and the purchaser is, is out of, totally out of luck. Omar Le Rova. Rova says I disagree with Romi Bahamo Nihi Dachrayas Dida Lo Kobil Ole. this son did not accept uh, guarantees uh, did not pre- um, provide guarantees in the face of the potential protest of his mother. So the purchaser understood that, that I'm not getting any guarantees in the case of the mother protesting. However, a guarantee regarding himself, did the son not accept that upon himself? Meaning that, of course, the son isn't going to be able to protest the sale. He's the one that made the sale. So, according to Rava, the son cannot, uh, if, if the son protests, let, let us say that, then he'll certainly have to offer compensation, uh, return the money that he received from the, purchase, the Suba purchaser. And now we have a, a new series. Uh, that's why we have, a, we have a slash mark here. But, um, one can actually question this slash mark because what you're going to see very shortly is a uh, a similar savora uh, on the part of Rava, uh, uh, which which contrasted this achrayas de alma versus achrayas de day. So there is a connection between these cases. Nevertheless, what we wanted to show is that we're starting a new series. And on the side of the Gemara under the Mivneh heading, we indicate that this series goes to Tzadi Gimel Omen Aleph. That means the entire, you can see the, if you look ahead, you'll see that Tzadi Bey's Omen Aleph uh, is covered with these cases. With the cases, and, and as well as Tzadi Bey's Omen Bey's. And the marking continues. Uh, and the, these cases go all the way till the uh, top of Tzadi Gimel Omen Aleph. The structural note on the side indicates that this bow tie marking is a sidra shel mikrim shepoischim beruvein shemochar sodel shimon. And you're going to see in this first case, and this is you'll see the uh, the connection to um, to the Gemara's before the the presence of uh, Rami Bar saying something and. And you'll see Rava responding. So that's by way of general um, structural note for people who are uh, particularly interested in Gemara structure. The Gemara. Oma Romi Barchama. Ruvain Shemochar Sode Lishimo. Shelo Bachrayas. Ruvain sells a field to Shimon uh, without any guarantee. That means that if a creditor of Ruvain were to come to take the field away from Shimon, then Shimon has no recourse to seek compensation. And that's, he knew that when he bought it. Fiosa Shimon umochro le Ruvain Shimon, one day, sells the field back to Ruvain with a guarantee that if Ruvain should lose the field, Shimon will compensate him. The Gemara continues at the top of Tzadi Bey's Omen Aleph. The Osa Balchov Dira'uvein the Katarif Leg Minei the a creditor of Ruvain money uh, uh, that Ruvain had owed to a fellow who had loaned him cash a long time ago. This creditor comes to take the field from Ruvain as payment for the debt that Ruvain owed him. Ruvain didn't have any cash to pay him up, so the creditor took the field. 
So now Reuven had bought this field. It was once his own field. But in the interim, he had sold it to Shimon and, and bought it back from Shimon with a guarantee. Dinahu de Ozil Shimon Umafzilei. Letter of the law. Shimon has to compensate Reuven. After all, Reuven bought this field most recently from Shimon with a guarantee. And now Reuven loses the field that he bought with the guarantee. Shimon should compensate him. Omar lay Rava. And again, you see Rava, uh, as we saw in the previous cases, Rava disagreeing with Rami Barhama, saying, Nehi da'achrayas da'alma kabul alay. Granted, Shimon accepted to compensate Ruvain for losses that would come as a result of some outside uh, reason. However, Achrayas de Nafshe, uh, accepting a guarantee for losses caused by Ruvain himself, Mi Kabul would Shimon have accepted that on him? You caused, you are the one responsible for the field being taken away because it's your debt that this Balchov is coming to collect. So I didn't accept to offer you compensation for that kind of loss that you are responsible for. Umoide Rava Beruvain Sheyorash Sodem Yankiv. Rava will concede. In the following case, where Ruvain inherited a field from Yankov, so Yankov is a benefactor, let's say his father, Umochro Lushimon Shalbachrayas. And Ruvain, after inheriting that field, he sold it to Shimon without any guarantee. Vyasa Shimon Umochro Ruvain Bachrayas. And Shimon sold the field back to Ruvain, giving him a guarantee along with that sale. And Ruvain's father's creditor, Ruf, Yankiv had borrowed money from some lender, the, 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 the debt never having been paid back. The, the lender comes to collect property that Yankiv once owned. And where is that property right now? It's right now in the hands of Reuven. Dinahu the Ozil Shimon Mafsi Lemine. And here Rava is conceding that Shimon must offer compensation to Reuven. My time. Oh. oh why here is Rava conceding that Shimon must offer compensation beforehand, he didn't say thusly. The Gemara explains Balchov the Yankiv, the creditor of Yankiv, the original owner of the field, Kebalchov the Alma Domi. He's like an outside Balchov. He's not Reuven's Balchov. It's true that Reuven is uh, viewed in other areas of halacha of, as a as bra kare de avua, the son is an extension of the father. But not so with regard to this particular analysis. The creditor of Yankov is not, is not related to Reuven. It's not, had, Reuven had never borrowed the money. And therefore, it's considered like what Rava said earlier, that Achrayas di Alma Shimon uh, is Mechabal, does accept upon himself. As you can see, the series of cases continues, but in the context of our Dafyomi Shiurim, uh, this is a convenient place to pause. With that, we conclude our Shiur for today.